Hey guys. Okay, so we got started finally. Um, welcome to week two of Simple Steps to Success. Whenever I say hey guys like that, I think of Ella, Laura. Um, oh, yeah. Hey guys. Um, hey. Taking, taking the mick out of us. Um, so welcome to week two. Um, if you are just getting into the Zoom, I do apologise. We had a few technical issues going on, but I think we sort of got, got there now. Um, so welcome to week two. Oh my God, last week was just friggin incredible honestly I feel I felt like I just had this like I can't even describe it this fire driving me through this week I felt so motivated I don't know about you guys so this week we are going to be talking all about um something that I know that every single one of you are going to want to get your pen and paper ready for because we're going to be talking about PRV and how to get your PRV and every single one of us get a minimum of 2,000 PRV every month. So we're gonna be sharing with you all the things, all the things um, oh. that we do. Um, I mean, Laura is even in like the 3,000, I think you've had 4,000 PRV. Not before. me. <laughs> has had over 4,000 PRV before. Oh my God, I've never had that high PRV. So we're all gonna learn something tonight. It literally is, um, it, this is going to be huge. So get your pens ready. No pressure to any of us. Um, <laughs> yeah. Loads of tips for you and, you know, get scribbling and get ready to take something away for this week. So over to you, Laura. I will Thank you. you. Okay. Right. I'm super excited to talk this week um, because like Lee said, I think this is an area where I think everyone should feel confident with um, your, your PRV is your basics of your business. And it's the area where you should feel like it comes quite comfortably but I think people sometimes overthink their PRV they see that big zero at the beginning of their month and they panic and they think oh my god I've had an amazing month last month and now it's at zero again and what do I need to do so we thought there's really there's some simple ways that you can boost your PRV so we're going to kind of talk about all the basics plus some of the extras maybe individually that we all do because I think when we spoke the other night when we were talking about this, we all kind of do the same things every month, but then individually, there's probably other things that we all do as well that can kind of boost our PRV a little bit. Um, my first thing kind of links into what I was saying last week, which is set your PRV goal at the beginning of the month. Every single month, I set my PRV goal and I break it down so that I know exactly what I need to be achieving every single week. So my PRV goal every month is two and a half thousand PRV. It used to always be 2000, but I gen generally always hit it. Um, I'm not saying that like, wow, look at me, but I'm just saying I, I generally did hit that. So I thought I'm gonna push myself that little bit further because there's no point saying that's my goal. Okay, I can hit that goal and I'm just gonna comfortably hit that goal every month. I choose to then push myself that little bit further to be able to achieve it. By setting that goal, I then break it down literally each week. So I go, okay, well, if I want, say, for example, to do 2,000, I know I need to do 500 each week. And I work out how I'm effectively going to get that 500 each week. So no matter what your goal is, whether it's to be active, whether it's 500 PRV to be paid at title, be paid on your team, whether it's 1,000 PRV or whether you want to go for that extra 30% or 5% should I say commission and hit that 30% commission and you're going for 2000 up. Whatever your goal is, like I said before, break it down. On that note, for anyone that doesn't know, once you achieve 2000 PRV, for that month you achieve 2000 PRV, your commission goes to 30%. So in my eyes, why wouldn't you go for 2000? Like why sell yourself short? Why say, well, I'm, I'm gonna go for 1500? Like push yourself to go for that 2000 because trust me, that extra 5%, 5% might not sound like a lot, but it really, really makes a difference. I remember the first month I hit that 2000 and I was like, oh my God, why have I not done this before? Why have I not tried to get 2000 PRV before? This was before I really had a team or anything like that. And the jump in my pay from doing my 1800 PRV to doing my over 2000, I was like, right, that's it. 100% I'm going to go for that every single month because it makes such a difference, such a difference to your pay. So it's literally like leaving money on the table. It's like sent to you going to you, right? There's some more money. Yeah. I, I don't want it. Exactly. What? Like okay. in my mind, like why wouldn't you go for that? And actually, yeah. loads of my girls, my team will agree with this. When I've had some of my girls that say on around eighteen hundred, and we've got four or five days left in the month, I'm like, go for the two thousand. And they're like, oh god, what two hundred PRV in a few days? And I'm like, yes. Like why wouldn't you? Because if you set your mind to it, actually getting two hundred PRV in a few days, if you really, really set your mind to it isn't that difficult. If you tell yourself you can't do it, then you're never going to do it. If you tell yourself you can, you 100% will be able to smash it. So always set yourself that goal to go that little bit further. Challenge yourself 
to to push yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit. But anyway, that was more like what we were talking about last week. But so add on that, I think as well, the pay on just two thousand PRV alone is just under seven hundred pounds. If I if yeah. I know rightly, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking I remember my first two thousand PRV was in. I joined in end of September. My first two thousand PRV was in November, so I didn't have a team, and I got paid eight hundred and fifty pounds. So it's just over 2000 something. And I'd literally just joined and didn't have a team or anything like that. And it was that that was my light bulb moment that made me go, okay, I'm always going to go for 2000 PRV. So always, always push yourself to do that. But in saying that, if your goal is to be active every month, that's fine. But my point I'm making is break it down so you know what you need to achieve every single day to get that PRV. So some of the things that we do, as I say, a lot of the things are going to be similar, um, but we might do them in, in slightly different ways. A big, big PRV boost for me every single month. And it's something I've been doing for probably the last, I want to say five or six months or so, um, is VIP boxes. I call them VIP boxes. People call them treat boxes, monthly boxes, whatever you choose to, to call them. I started doing these because I thought I want to be active on day one of my month. I want to start my month with an active order. I want to start at midday on, on day one of my month being active. My plan is actually to get enough people signed up to these. So I start my month with 500 PRVs when I'm paid at my title, well, not paid on my title, but paid on my, my teamies. That's my aim. But at the moment it gets me active on day one. So what are my treat boxes? So basically every month they started out as, as a VIP box. So they only went to a certain amount of customers, my bestest customers, my customers that come to me month after month. I started to put putting together these boxes that I advertised as a monthly VIP box. I charged two different price points. Um, I started out with a £10 and a £20 box because I thought, well, I don't want to price people out, um, but I didn't want to just do the lower price option in case people wanted extra. So that's how I started them out. Um, I started, I think, as I say, with five, five or so people. And at the moment, I've probably got about 12 or 13 people that regularly buy my boxes for me. So I generally start day one of my month with around 300 PRB just from those. Now, I'll be honest, when I first started doing them, the mistake I initially made, and it took a month or so to then get away from that, the, the mistake I initially made is I wanted to make them look so amazing that I, I made it a bit of a special deal. So they were paying me... £20 for a box and I was filling it with it about £30 of Scentsy which if people choose to do that that is totally up to you but I realised that that was then affecting the rest of my sales for that month because those people who regularly bought Scentsy from me were like well I'm just going to hold out for one of these VIP boxes because I'm going to get loads more Scentsy for a little bit cheaper and I don't like doing special offers but I found I'd creeped into kind of doing special offers in a way with my VIP boxes so I after a couple of months of doing that, I was like, no, do you know what? Actually, these boxes are getting so much attention and people are loving them. But I, don't need to, I don't need to devalue this product. We don't need to devalue Sensi. We don't need to do a special offer in Sensi because my customers were loving the boxes and it wasn't because they were getting more for their money. They just genuinely loved the effort that I put into making these boxes. So I changed it a little bit and I thought, no, do you know what? The price of what they're paying is the amount of Scentsy that they are going to get because there is absolutely no reason to devalue this product. So I started then on charging £15 and £30. So there's two different price options. The £15 one because I knew that there were people out there who they're my best customers, but they've got all of their warmers. They've got all of the bits and bobs they need. They just love that little extra treat. But then I know full well they're not going to go for a large box. They always talk about getting a whiff box, but they don't want to get a whiff box because they can't go to that price bracket. So I make sure, and I think it's really important if you choose to do these, give yourself those price options for those people that are willing to pay a bit more on their Sensi and those people that actually just want a, li a little extra monthly treat. So I've done a 15 pound, I now do a 15 pound and a 30 pound box. The contents of my box now Sensi wise, never exceeds the 15 and the 30 pounds. However, what I do is I make my customers feel special. I put some really cute little extras in that box. They don't cost me a fortune. I take a trip to home bargains, it's like the best place in the land for when you're getting little extra little bits to put in your boxes. And I go on Amazon and I go mad and I do treat my customers, not at a big extra expense to me, um, but just, things that I can buy in bulk that I know make those special extra little touches. So for example, this month, because it's Valentine's, I've bought um, heart confetti and packs of love hearts and a little sachet of hot chocolate and chocolate hearts, like 
simple little things and some pink tissue paper like I make them feel special um, and small things like that although the contents of what they're having is still 15 pounds worth of sensi they're like oh my god and they literally love it and they post about it on my page and actually any of my teamies that were my customers actually if you're watching I know Shelly when you um, became one, one of my girls Shelly became one of my teamies she was like can I still get your VIP boxes and I was like well you can but you don't have to <laughs> because you can all get your sensi for free but putting those extra little touches in made people love the boxes it made people want to talk about the boxes it makes my customers when they get those boxes they post it everywhere they post it on their personal Facebook they post it on their Instagram they post it on my page that then makes other people go what is this that they're all getting? And then that is what's ups my amount of people that get my VIP treat boxes. So I started with five and I now, as I say, have a regular kind of 12 to 15 people that then buy them. So adding those thoughtful little extras into these boxes, you can do a bag, you can do a box, whatever you choose to do. But I think it's really important to get that point across. If you're gonna do something like this to make you active on day one, it's not a special offer. Like you're not promoting special offers. You're not, scrambling around with your credits and using up all your credits to make this box extra special the product that we have and the price we have it's worth the price that it is so put in the amount that they're spending with sensi and then just put some lovely little extras that you know they're going to think are super thoughtful and they're the things that are going to make them go i really love my sense of consultant i don't want to go elsewhere i want to stick with her and i want to, I want to tell everyone how amazing my box is and i want to tell everyone about it and post it all over social media and that then gets spikes everybody else's interest to then create that that love around those boxes so they want to get it month after month the other thing that i do with my treat boxes is i always put products in there that my customers don't regularly buy it would be super easy for me to go, okay, like people have bought a 15 pound box, I'll just stick two bars of wax in there um, and a scent circle, which would be lovely, but my customers buy wax from me anyway. So me putting that in there isn't gonna benefit me in any way. Whereas me putting in there this month, for example, I've done um, the sugar scrub. And me putting the sugar scrub in there means that those customers who have got all their warmers and they buy their waxes and they regularly get their car bars and stuff, they've now got a sugar scrub, which they've never used before. And we all know full well that it's lovely and they're going to fall in love with it. And then I'm going to start getting customers that will start buying the body products because they'll use the sugar scrub and go, oh, actually, how about I've not used the Scentsy Soap before? And they'll start to fall in love with the body products. And that straight away then gets those customers more likely to be then repeat ordering those things. I've done soap one month and I never used to sell soap. I literally never used to sell it. No one bought it. I put it in my VIP boxes. Now I sell loads of it. So mix it up, like don't just get complacent with putting the same things in. If you choose to do these boxes, don't put the same things in all the time because they can get themselves some wax and they probably do choose to get wax most months. So mix it up a little bit and make it more special. Okay. Um, in terms of the advertising around my boxes, um, I don't plaster it over my page all the time um, because I, it's not a special offer, but I think people will look at it as a special offer. So I do advertise it generally two days before the end of the month to say, um, everyone on my VIP box list, I'll be getting your messages out to you. And I get those messages out to those people. When I'm packing up my, when my orders come in for my VIP boxes, I always take lots of pictures. And I don't try and, I'm not spammy and try and sell the boxes at that point. I would just take a really cute picture and build that excitement up for those that are about to receive their boxes. But it also spikes interest for those that haven't got the box before to go, why is this that this that she's talking about? Like, that looks cute, whatever she's packing up. And it's not a sales post at all. It literally will be a little boomerang of me popping something in the bag or something like that. And it spikes people's interest. And that's then when I have messages going, what are your VIP boxes? That sparks up a conversation. And then that potentially then leads to an extra person wanting that VIP box next month. So the VIP boxes for me work really, really well. And as I say, my plan for that is, because as I say, you've always got to set your goal. Um, I have around, as I say, 12 to 15 people at the moment signed up to that. I'm planning on getting at least 20 people and getting myself to my 500 PRV, because what a way to start your month. Like if you can get a successful amount of people buying these at the beginning of your month, you can start your month active, which ultimately has got to be your goal for the first of every single month. And don't be disheartened. If you think, actually, that's a great idea, I'm going to do it, and only two people buy it. So what? Two people only bought it. When I done it, the first month, as I say, five people bought it, and now there's generally 12 to 13. Keep going with it. Keep 
pushing the idea, keep making your, those five customers that bought wine and made them feel special. So then they, those five people told their friends, that five suddenly turned to 10, and then that 10 turns to 15. So don't be put off if you go for this idea and you only get one or two on the uptake. Like make those one or two customers feel so special that they're gonna shout about it all over their social media. Because so I can guarantee that will then spike other people's interests. And if you also do decide to do the boxes, mix it up, like I say, mix up the products. I've done ones with washer whiffs. I've done ones with soak. This month I'm doing it with the scrub. I've done it with cleaning products. I think I've only done one box that was primarily wax. So I've always, always mixed up the products. And the amount of people that say to me, do you know what? I never would have thought to try the soap or I never would have thought to try the hand cream and all of those things. So it's a really good idea to get those new other products under people's noses. Um, I've never put a warmer in, no, that's a line I have at Christmas because it was a special box. So I, pri I charged, it was a 35 pound box and I've done the blue glitter warmers um, at Christmas. That's the only time I've done a warmer. Other than that, I've never ever put a warmer in there because again, I think people worry and it's something that I've thought about as well. I don't want customers to stop regularly buying from me because they'll just wait for the VIP box. And if I start put putting warmers in there or fan diffusers and things like that in there, that potentially could affect my sales throughout the rest of the month. So that's why I don't put those things in there because I want those customers still to come to me to buy the warmers and buy the fan diffusers and the mini fans and all of those items. So again, that's just my advice on, on those. Um, okay, so that's my VIP boxes. Um, my second tip and probably my biggest tip, and I do lives on this all the time with my girls, and I think it's the biggest tip you can have for your PRV is to upsell. If you are not upselling, when people send you an order through, you are not upselling, you are massively missing a trick. It's the key factor, I think, in my PRV in why I managed to get that high PRV. I literally, if somebody sends a message to me for an order, I never just go, okay, yeah, great, thanks, Anne, I'll put it through. Every single one, I will try and upsell. So if someone's ordering washer whips, do you need laundry liquid to go with it? If somebody's ordering two wax bars, why don't you get three? Because actually it works out each bar is going to be cheaper for you. If someone wants four, well, you might as well go for a six pack because you're paying for one more and you'll get two more bars. I always, always will do that. If someone wants a, a warmer and one bar of wax, I'm like, well, hon, you might as well just get a bundle with three bars of wax because again, it works out cheaper for you. As soon as people see that word, it works out cheaper for you. They're like, oh, really? And you're like, well, yeah, actually it brings the price of each wax bar down. And they're like, oh, okay, totally. People feel... I think people are reluctant to upsell because they're like, oh God, that's a bit cringy. Like, I don't really want to ask that. But actually we were talking about this the other day and Lisa used a great analogy and I was like, yes, that is exactly what, what you think with it. Like when you're at McDonald's or at a restaurant, say if you're at a restaurant and you give the waitress your order and then she's like, would you like any sides? You don't go, oh my God. Oh my God, she's asked me if I want sides. How rude. Like, oh my God, that's awkward. Like you don't, you're just like, oh yeah, actually I have X, Y, and Z. It's exactly the same. If someone's like, can I have two bars of wax? Would you want three? Because actually that makes each bar slightly cheaper. Oh, actually, yeah, okay then. Like, don't be scared to ask that because actually with each of those little extras, you'd be so surprised how quickly that bumps your PRV up. I offer bulbs to people, cotton cleanups, all of those things. I, will, I literally upsell everything. If someone says, actually, no, I'm fine with two bars of wax. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Like, it's not awkward. I've just offered them if they want a better deal. If they don't, that's totally fine. But if you aren't upselling to people, then you massively are missing out. The amount of people that have ordered four bars of wax and I'm like, get a six pack. And nine times out of 10, people will go, okay, great, I'll get a six pack. If you don't ask, you don't get, as I always, always say, you always need to ask people, especially actually with the body bundles. If you, if people are buying a soap and a hand cream, if you don't offer them the moisture medley, you're mad. Because actually with the moisture medley, they're effectively getting their soap for free. So ask them. The worst that can happen is they say no. They say no, you're like, okay, cool. But the best thing that can happen is they say, yeah, and you've upgraded your order from a hand soap and a hand cream up to a moisture medley. So you may as well ask, is always my thought process with it. So yeah, never be scared of asking. Never ever be scared of asking. When Lisa said the McDonald's thing the other day, when they say, do you, do you want to go large? You don't get offended. You just go, yeah, okay. Nine times out of 10, you say, okay, don't do what I do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so always just go for the upsell um okay my next tip is become your customer's best friend gain your customer's trust customer service i think is such a huge part of this business if you are if you look at your customers as someone that you're just there to gain money from 
you're never going to succeed. Whereas if you look at your customers as your friends and, and you gain their trust and you get to know them, you'll succeed so much quicker in this business. Like so many of my customers, when they're like, Laura, I need some new wax. And I'm like, okay, hon, what do you fancy? And they're like, oh, do you know what? Do you want to just pick for me? And that to me is a massive compliment that they're quite happy to go, well, do you just want to pick? Because they know that I know what they like and I'm not just going to throw a random six pack at them just because I want a six pack. Like I'm going to choose them what I know that they really want. And so I think it's really important for your customers to know that you don't just see them with money bags in your eyes, that you actually see them as a friend and you're actually getting to know them. Like for example, I've got one customer who she's literally bought so many warmers to the point I see her husband in the street and I'm like, why? Because I know that he's paying for it all and I'm a little bit like, oh, this is awkward. And he just gives me that look. Like she buys loads from me. But she, uh, she's got triplets and this, is, this isn't my friend with the little triplets. She's actually got grown up triplets. Um, but her kids have got, like one of her kids in particular has got super, 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 super sensitive skin. Now I could say to her, why don't you just try a washer with and a laundry liquid? Like I'm sure he'll be fine, which I'm sure he will be because I'm sure they are super, super, super gentle. But I know she would be a little bit, I know she'd be reluctant and I know she'd be put off because that's just how she is about those kind of things. So if I tried to be pushy and sell that to her, she would massively backtrack from me. And so I, I, I don't, I don't go there because yeah, do you know what? They probably would be fine and I could give her those samples. But I know for whatever I give her samples, she won't try it because that's how nervous she is about it. And so if I was trying to push that because she's a great customer, she buys loads and I know that actually when she tries it, it would be fine and she'd buy shed loads from me. I don't push it because I know full well the moment I do, that relationship and that friendship we've built together totally goes down the drain. So I'm not gonna push that to jeopardize all of that that I have with her. And so I think gaining your customer's trust and making them see, sorry, someone's totally trying to phone me. Um, <laughs> gaining your customer's trust and letting them see that you aren't just seeing them as someone to make money out of is really, really important. They'll also be willing to try more once they've gained your trust as well. So I have had customers before who say haven't tried any of our body products. I had a customer who loves sea salt and avocado and obviously it was being discontinued in body products last, last month. Last month, totally losing track. Where are we now, February, last month. Um, and I know she loves sea salt and avocado but she's never tried any of our body stuff. So I messaged her and I said, look, you totally love it. I know you've never tried the body stuff before but you love this scent so much, trust me. Uh, you need the hand cream and the sand and the, the soap in your life. And she was like, yeah, okay, do you know what? I'll give it a whirl. Now, do you know what? She's never bought any product, body products from me before, but because she trusts me, and I actually said in the message, trust me, like you will absolutely love these. She's gone, okay, great. But if I'm just all the time, every time I spoke to her, was just like, oh, do you need some new wax? Or do you need this? Or do you need that? Do you need that? Like, she probably wouldn't have that relationship with me. Like, don't be spammy. Don't be salesy with your customers. Like, get to know them and, and actually do take an interest don't take an interest because you feel you have to take an interest actually take an interest in them and what they like and why they like it and in their lives and their kids and stuff like that like building that relationship with your customers will be absolutely paramount to you having a successful business because they'll want to refer you they'll want to tell other people about you they'll want to tell their friends and family oh actually if their friends and family say about sensi they'll be like i've got a great girl that you can go to if you just treat them in a sousy way, they're never gonna refer you. I do a refer a friend scheme, which I'm not gonna go into because I know one of the other girls is, is covering it. But I know full well that my customers are happy to refer me because I treat them well and I've gained their trust for them. So it's such an important thing. Customers have got so much choice, they can go anywhere. We all know there's loads of sense of consultants around. Like I hear it all the time. Oh, there's so many, I know someone lives down the road and my sister does it and my best friend does it and 10 mums at the school do it. Like we're all aware of that. But there's also a whole heap of people and customers can go anywhere, absolutely anywhere. I heard um, a, a quote once that, what was it? Customers can hire you or fire you whenever they like. And it is so true, so true. So if you aren't treating your customers well, there's someone down the school that they can go to instead. So you need to invest in your customers. You need to get to know your customers. You need to make them want to buy from you. And all those little extras that you do, uh, sorry, Laura, you're going to say something, Gum. I'll wait, go on. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All those little lectures that you do are so, so important. So whether it's popping extra samples in their bag, whether it's a little handwritten note with their orders, 
whether it is, this sounds really silly, but one of my customers comments when I put tissue paper on her order. So I put tissue paper in all of her orders because little things like that make her go, oh, it was really nice. She does that little extra for me. Like make them feel special, make them feel important. Make them see why you can offer them a better service than someone else. Like I'm not saying, be saying to people, oh, look, I'm here and I'm doing better than your sense of consultant and grab them away. Like that's not what we do. That's not the sense of spirit that we do. But the customers that are with you, make them see why they should stay with you as opposed to going elsewhere. Get to know them, get to know their likes, get to know their dislikes and everything. Okay, so they're my top tips. Um, one thing I haven't touched on, which I'm going to very briefly go over because I'm going over my time. So I then hand over to the girls um, is personal specials. Now, personal specials there's absolutely no getting away from the fact that they're a great prv boosting opportunity like of course they are they can send your prv skyrocketing however and i'm just going to give my totally honest opinion on this personal specials are something that i used to actually do i fell into the trap of when i'd only been doing it for a few months i was like i'm gonna boost my prv right okay great i'm gonna do a large warmer special and then a month later oh what should i do i'm gonna do a wax special and then the next month i'm gonna do a mini warmer special or, oh i'm gonna do mystery bags and i suddenly realized that month after month after month i was doing all these personal specials and yes it was giving me great prv i'm not gonna lie like my prv was was amazing but then i started my customers had the stuff they needed and then all of a sudden i was like oh no one wants to pay full price for anything so I was like, oh, honey, you need a top up of wax? And they're like, oh yeah, I'll wait till you're doing a special offer. And I thought, mm, great. Well, I wasn't really planning on doing a special offer. Oh, someone would comment on a mini warmer they loved. Oh my God, I absolutely love that mini warmer. When are you next doing a special on mini warmers? And it literally took me a couple of months of having to almost rebuild my business again because people didn't want to pay full price for it. Because why would they? Before I've given them a mini warmer for 20 pounds, why are they ever going to want to pay 24? And if I've done them wax for a fiver, why are they going to want to pay £7.25? So I now never do specials because I started to think I don't need to do specials. Like our product is good enough. We don't need to devalue our product. If people now message me and they're going, honey, are you doing any specials on wax? I'm like, yeah, you can do buy five, get one free. And that's literally my response because that is the special offer that we do. You can bundle it. You're doing special offers on mini warmers. Yeah, you can buy it with a bundle with three waxes and it gets it discounted. Bundle and saves are our special offers. Don't fall into the trap of feeling like you need to do a special offer month after month because you'll have probably five months of brilliant PRV and then you'll probably have seven months of really struggling to claw your business back. So now I don't do them. And what then happens because I now don't do them is if on the very rare occasion I do, like at Christmas, I've done a fragrance flower special, they went like that because I don't do them very often. So then when I did do it, people were like grabbing to try and get them because it wasn't something that I normally do. So I think it's really important to not fall into that trap because it is very easy. If you're on 1900 PRV and you're like, oh, I want an extra 100 PRV because I want to get to that 2000, sod it, I'm going to do a quick wax, wax special. Like I've done it plenty of times before. So I'm not going to say that I haven't, I have, but it's something I've promised myself this year, I'm not going to do at all because it devalues the products it, they lose their appeal. If you're doing them all the time, they lose their appeal. Like, it's not appealing, is it? If they, you're like, oh, I'm doing a special offer, they'll be like, oh, I should get the next one. Like, it's it's not as, as special because you're doing them constantly. And so then when you're not doing them constantly, people will literally be biting your arm off to try and get them. And that's what then makes them more special, makes them more effective for your business. Um, so yeah, that's just my take personally on personal specials. Um, and that's it. I think that's everything. I don't know if there ever was anything I didn't cover. Girls, if there was, then you can chip in on any of the bits that I was meant to cover that I didn't. But I'm just aware I've been talking for a really long time. <laughs> so I'm going to hand back over to the girls. It probably feels longer, uh, longer logs. We started later. Don't worry. So oh, okay. I literally looked at the time and I'm like, oh my God, it's 11 minutes past nine. No, honestly. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah, it was brilliant. There was a few questions in the chat. Oh, what sorry. I wasn't even keeping an eye on the chat. Sorry. No, that's all right. The one thing I, when I was like trying to like, there's so many times I want to go, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you, you know, we all feel the same. Like I might do a personal special once a year. And that's that's been the same, like you said, in the beginning. If you build a business on specials, I can guarantee you won't have a business in five years, 10 years, 20 years. Because, And if people want to go somewhere to get a better deal, let them go. Because that consultant that's running their business on deals won't be around for very long. And they'll come back to you. So let them go and they will return. Okay. Um, 
And the thing, sorry, the thing I was going to interject and say is when you were saying about like treat your customers like your VIPs, I think there's a real misconception that as you grow your organization and as you grow your team and as you become a director and star director and superstar director, oh, you've got an amazing team. Like that never stops. Doesn't matter how many team members you've got. If you don't look after your customers, you don't have a business that comes first doesn't matter how many team members you've got because your business is your business and one if you haven't got a strong business what have your team has got to aspire to and secondly if your customer base falls apart everything else unravels so it's so important it doesn't matter if you're an essential consultant or an ssd there's we have to work just as hard every single month for our prv and to look after our customers so that's why always your, your customers always come first that's what i want to say <laughs> You're next, I think, Laura. Oh, oh, I? I thought it was you. <laughs> oh, I, can't, I can't. You go next. One, go for it. Okay, right. Okay, so. Uh, right, okay, hang on. Ooh, I thought it was... <laughs> right. Hey, I next. have to talk to you about uh, marketing, about how, how we market the products, um, and about, like, advertising the whole... We have a whole range. It's not just Dr. Mormon. So. Um, have you, if you've all got your workbooks, because um, I'm going to reference some of these posts, so you should all, if you've got your workbooks, I've got them in front of you, you'll have some example um, sales posts. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is how we market the product. Um, I'm sorry. So this is, look, butterfly flying past like a magpie. I promise I'm not ignoring the comments, but the other girls will probably reply in the chat or I'll look at the end. Okay, so um, what I've come to you, so I have a bit of structure and I don't just go off on a tangent, is um, this was the topic that I was due to talk about at World Tour in um, Maidstone uh, in 2020 before lockdown happened. So I actually had uh, as a presentation written about this. So this is what I've just gone through and highlighted. Not the whole thing, but some points. Okay, so what is your best advert for your business? It is you, okay? You are your shop front, you are your marketing department, you, the unique, powerful, authentic, incredible person that only you can be. So it's time to embrace your individuality and who you are. People relate to people. Because like Laura said a minute ago, there are thousands of center consultants and that's absolutely fine. That's not specific to network marketing. There are thousands of hairdressers there are thousands of accountants i'm just trying to think of other, other trades but you've got hairdressers that never really get their business off the ground and then you've got like vidal sassoon i don't know why i just thought of him but you know what i mean like there are there's always going to be thousands and thousands of people but people so you are your brand so it doesn't matter that we're all selling the same product you are your brand and that's what people are going to relate to so really think about what attracts people to you our product all about the bigger picture what you are putting out into the world the way you conduct yourself the content that you post on your social media pages the conversations that you have with people is all part of the beautiful jigsaw and you see that word attract that's the goal right to create nurture grow and market something so special that you literally draw people into you and attract people to you step forward attraction marketing okay it is so important like so important, if, in, if I'm honest, it is the only thing that has grown my business is attraction marketing. Attracting customers, hosts, and especially potential team members works best when you promote your sense of life in a real authentic way. So coming back to, um, to your workbook, you'll see some sales post examples here. Lisa has put together this document for you all to have a look at. I'm just gonna turn it around. Have a look at these sales post examples, okay? They're all talking about us using the product. Not one of them has a flyer going, oh, look, this one was £25 and it's not showing us, okay? So um, the first one, top left, Lisa's gone, you know, pooch walked, it's cold out, home to a wax change in the hole downstairs, pink promenade in my hallway and kitchen and Amazon rain in my whole lounge. Three to four cubes in every warmer. It's all about that cosy comfort. Time for a cuppa and to put, put an order on. She's showing how she's using Sensi in, in her everyday life, okay? Oh, do, um, you want, do you want me to share the document as well on the screen? Oh, yeah, you could do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sex. Well, keep talking and I'll, I'll find it okay no, you need to see like oh my um, top right okay so was when I'd been out with um Dan and the kids we'd just moved we've been out to walk the dog down the river what a gorgeous day beautiful crisp muddy morning walks with my little crew loving our new village home and the sun is shining through the window to this absolute little beauty love our fragrance flowers the prettiest little reed diffuser you ever did see ever did see still smelling incredible after three weeks so I haven't gone oh look we've got fragrance flowers they're 19 pound 50 but I've talked about them and using them in my home. So you'll you kind of get the idea there. The one at the, at the bottom from Laura. Uh, Friday evening wax change, takeaway and a glass of vino. 
The scent is just incredible. Ginger Spice, February scent of the month is a new fave. It's totally not what I would have expected. So much better than I thought. I'm in love. Ginger Spice, sultry pink amber, sets the mood while lemon zest and fresh ginger bring the spice. No price, no flyers, all real life pictures and using the product in our homes and in our life. So back to what I've written. So people want to buy, but they don't want to be sold to. Creating marketing that is simply spammy sales posts will do nothing but turn your network off. This might be controversial, but I'm really not a fan of flyers. If you looked in my customer group, all the photos are authentic and real. Show yourself using the products, your family, in your home, in your car, using your whisk, doing the washing, which is actually quite ironic because I didn't know that said that in there. But if you look at the picture that Lisa's chosen, it is me showing using the whisk um, in my new utility room. Um, so where did I get to? Okay, explain how the products are fit into your day. Use descriptive, funny language that sounds like you. Now, this one, I could not stress enough. When we say we all share ideas and we all share real life images, if you just copy and paste a post from another consultant, that is not you speaking. I know 100% when I write my post, it sounds like how I talk and people will see through that. If you just copy, a, <laughs> I'm totally just going to use an example, Lisa, and I know you won't mind because... Um, We've all done it. Like, I'm not saying we haven't all done it. We've all been busy and gone, oh, that's an amazing post. I'll just borrow it and like change a couple of words. We've all done it. And <laughs> Lisa did it when I was pregnant and put a thing over and said something about, oh, I'm pregnant now. You might want to change that because you've just told the world that you're pregnant. And she was like, oh my God, I better change that. So I'm not saying- I have done it since. Just no, like <laughs> no, but what I mean is I've done it. Like we've all, I'm not saying that none of us have ever borrowed a post from another consultant because obviously- that we all do it occasionally on the odd occasion, but do not build your business by just going, I'll copy that, I'll copy that, I'll copy that, I'll just use that because that's not you, that's not authentic and that's not showing the world who you are. So use desirable posts. Think about like Max and Spencer. They are literally the king and queen of this type of marketing. They wouldn't just say like, oh, it's, um, this is a roast potato. They'd be like, oh, it's a soft Max and Spencer roast potato glazed in, just roast potatoes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's what, yeah. So that, that is totally attraction marketing. It's all about simply, we do not sell a product. Like I know we do sell a product, but we share a product. Um, on social media, it's probably died off a little bit now, but about a month ago, everyone, everyone was talking about Bridgerton. Everyone was talking about Bridgerton on Netflix. Netflix, we're not paying all those people to say how much they loved Bridgerton. That is all network marketing is. You are literally using a product that you love and sharing it. That is it. It's all just about simply sharing your love for the products, recommending them, just how you would your favorite restaurant, your favorite film. How many times have you bought something simply because you've seen someone recommend it? All the time. The reason I know this business works, I am a sucker for somebody posting. This is amazing. I'm like, I love some. Today, I'll just tell you a little story. Today, we were... Um, I was going out to do some deliveries and to get Finley to sleep and um, Bite, which is a local like cafe in MA, do these like amazing cookies. They're like melt Oreos in there and Toblerones. And I literally, I was going out to do some deliveries. I had no intention that like, I was going to get a coffee. And then as I was out, I was like, oh, I'll get the kids some cookies. They've done really well. I totally got sucked in because he was putting all these pictures of like amazing cookies. I didn't have one myself. I will just say I was very proud of that. I did a fish and chips for me to me dinner though. Um, but anyway, I totally got sucked in to his attraction marketing showing, oh my God, look, I've made these amazing cookies today. I was like, yeah, sign me up. I love some. Oh, yesterday, Women's Best is a fitness clothing brand that we all love, right? <laughs> Dan jokes that like us three literally keep them in business. I've, I do not need any more fitness clothes, like literally, but they put up a picture last night that everything was buy one, get one free. Guess what? I've got two new outfits and some t-shirts coming because I'm a sucker for it, because people just love that kind of marketing. Okay. Ooh. When I used to teach my fitness classes, I'll go to the gym, I would always wear a Scentsy hoodie and water bottle. When I go on holiday, I use my Scentsy towel and suitcases. So it's all just showing you using the Scentsy products um, in your life, always representing. Okay. <sighs> Take a breather. Right. So um, hostesses, uh, like potential customers, the freebies that you get, let them see the freebies, whether it's at an actual party, obviously not at the moment, or a party order that you've processed. Who doesn't love a freebie? Earning your Scentsy for free is all part of your Scentsy life. Laura Street, if you're on here, I totally 100% know after asking you for two years that you'd be an amazing consultant. I've been out for a run. 
and I'd put up a post of all the stuff I got free and I opened my WhatsApp and it went, da 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 Right, I saw that you just got £180 free cents tea. Like, how do I get that? So it totally 100% works. And you're fully okay to share that, but you need to just add the income disclosure. Okay. Right, that goes on to Teamy, so I'm not going to talk about that because that's not relevant to what we're doing, generating PRV. Okay, so last thing. Uh, when you're doing post office runs, school delivery drops, packing orders in your PJs, watching Love Island, printing Teamy recognition, whatever it might be, show the world your Scentsy role. Okay, that is that has covered lifestyle posts. So that is my first biggest tip. This is a Lisa Rollwood term. Do not be a spammer. People do not want to see... This one was 50 pound, this wax is 725. People relate to you. And that's why it's really important when we've talked about like you cannot um, build two net, you can't run two network marketing companies at the same time. You just can't, it just doesn't work. Um, if you, this is a Fraser Brooks term, if you talk about everything, you'll be known for nothing because it's so much more than just selling a product. If you're, you're, if you're marketing yourself right, um, then people will buy into that. If one minute you're posting about this, then you're posting about this, people are going to switch off and they're not going to relate to you. So that's why that's really important. Okay, second thing, uh, social media, multiple platforms. So some people, uh, we talk about obviously using social media to promote your business, which is really important. But remember, not everybody's on Facebook, not everybody's on Instagram, and some people won't be on social media at all. So it's really important that you also mark, that you market yourself um, when it comes to generating PRV on multiple platforms because um, social media is really important, okay? It's a massive part of all our businesses and we all use it every single day. I just do it without even like really thinking about it now. But if Facebook closed tomorrow this is what you need to ask yourself. If Facebook and Instagram closed down tomorrow, would you still have a business? Would you still have a, um, a means of um, like contacting your customers? If the answer is no, you wouldn't have a business, then you need to address that. Um, the VIP boxes um, that Laura just talked about, the first time I ever did them, the first month, I didn't put anything on my Facebook group. I sold 20 of them purely via WhatsApp. And then what I did, um, I made it really unique to them um, because then the people on my WhatsApp broadcast this because then what happened is, like Laura said, when they all started to get them and then they all started to share them on my page, all these people in my group were like, what are they? What is she doing? What? It's like a little secret club they all want to be in. But I did that totally away from social media. Um, so I have a WhatsApp broadcast list. If you don't know what a broadcast list is, basically... Um, it's you can set it up you can put your customers on there but then when it, it's like bcc on an email when it sends it out it sends it all to them individually so then when they reply to you um they're replying one on one so have a whatsapp broadcast list email um phone your mouse conversations like you need to be open to like multiple platforms another thing do you know how many people i, I hear say all the time i don't use instagram so i don't know how to use it well, the only way how you the only way you get to learn how to do something is, is by learning. I didn't know how to use Instagram. Like I am the do you know what? I'm actually I'm gonna retract that statement because I always say I'm a technophobe. I don't think I am anymore. I'm learning, but I was a technophobe when I started because everyone is a beginner. Whatever you do in life, everyone is always a beginner. Everyone's always got to learn. Like everyone. So you can't just say, Oh, I don't use Instagram, so don't know how to use it. What you're really saying is I can't be bothered to learn how to use it. And that is a touch. And honestly and truly, when I put the time and effort into learning, and I'm still really, really not an expert with Instagram, I'm still learning every day. But when I started to use my stories and, you know, massively, like I get sales from there. It's a brilliant way for interaction. So if you want to grow your business and you want to grow your PRV, which is obviously, you know, we all take our hats off to you. Like you're all here giving your time and investing in yourself and your business. You're, that's obviously why you're here. Um, you need to think of multiple avenues um, to market the products and your business. Right, okay. Um, and the last thing, um, advertise the whole range that we do, okay? Um, and again, I totally know like it's an easy trap to fall into because we've all done it, but like it's so easy to fall into the trap of advertising the same products over and over again, just advertising warmers, just advertising wax. Um, I'm totally guilty of like, I have a dog and I don't advertise the pet range enough. And when I do, I always sell some. So um, we have 
wax, we have warmers, we have the pet range, we have laundry, we have kids, we have the flowers, we have the body range. Literally make it like, you know, if you go through like a, a I don't know, a two week period and say, right, every single day, I'm going to make sure I'm going to choose something that are, are diffusers or the premium diffusers. Look, there's loads more. Sensi Go, Wall Fan Diffusers. We have a whole range of products. And it is a fact that in life in general, like you get what you focus on if you or in, and in your business. If you focus on, I want to get 200 PRV this week and I'm going to do it by breaking it down, like Laura said, into daily targets and I'm going to do it by advertising six packs or advertising this or advertising this. Make sure that you're not just advertising wax and warmers because we are so much more than that. Um, I think that's it. I think I'm done. I'm going to stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, um, love it. I, I've just, honestly, I've, when we did all them posts, I said it made me realise how much we use, all of us, we work our businesses really similar and we just don't sell the product. We yeah. share the product. I think that's really important. Right, guys, okay, so I'm going to talk to you um, about a couple of systems, if you like, that you can get in place that can create and generate PRV. So I'm going to start with talking about sampling and probably we talk about sampling all the time and I know there's loads of questions about, you know, what we sample in, in terms of like examples of our samples. And trust me, there is loads of training out on YouTube, on all of our YouTubes about like how we sample, like what size bottles we buy, what packets we buy. So we're not gonna answer anything on that. I'm actually gonna talk about sampling with a word called intention tonight. So sampling is something that flip 180'd my business. When I first started my samples, oh my God, I feel really embarrassed saying this, but Nicola Wilson, if she's on here, she will vouch. One, my samples were given in sandwich bags, like literally Tesco's, Sani bags, chucked a few, few samples in. I just wasn't really down with all of that. I remember doing Joe's class of 20, no, it was 2018, and I had to make samples. And I remember thinking, oh my God, this is so not my bag. I'm never going to melt wax. I'm never going to make samples. And then someone suggested about cutting up wax. And I was like, oh my God, game changer. But for a long while, I probably sampled, they were lucky if they got half a cube, maybe a sliver, maybe no samples at all because I couldn't be bothered. And I'm not going to lie. That was how, when I first started for a long while, probably until I probably hit director. And suddenly I thought, sugar, I need to really be doing this because otherwise my team are not going to do it. So I decided to really focus on my sampling and I massively upped my game and I decided, I watched quite a lot of trainings that basically said you need to sample everything, but you need to sample with intent. So when I'm doing my samples now, I the first thing I go and do is get the catalogue because I think it's the most important tool that you've got, it's like a viable. I go to the back of this and Kirsty England's done some amazing training on this in my group and I get this little book out and I look at all the products that we do in the most sense. So for example, Amazon Rain, we're doing everything. I'm gonna order Amazon Rain. I make sure that I'm gonna buy that with my credit. So I'm gonna order that wax. I'm gonna order Amazon Rain washer lifts, or I'm gonna order um, Amazon Rain in, I don't know, um, definitely in wax and washer lifts at least. Hold on, my brain's gone a bit blank. So um, the same with maybe um, Blue Grotto, Cloves Line, for example. Um, Luna. So that's my starting point. And I pick those products. And I, if I'm starting to sample, that's where I start. The reason for doing that is because we sell if, so many products in those particular scents. They, for example, I was to sample Mineral Oasis, for example. It's a beautiful wax. But if I get that out to people and don't get all the other stuff out to people, I, if I get, say, coconut lemongrass out there and someone goes, oh my God, that scent is amazing. I can follow up with that person and I can say, do you know, we do that in cleaning, we do that in bathroom range, we do that in scent packs, we do that in pods. And straight away, if they love that scent, you're opening up a whole new opportunity of doors. I've got people that say to me, oh my God, I just love Amazon Rain. So because they love Amazon Rain, they will go and then they will go and buy all the products in Amazon Rain. Sorry guys, I'm just, I think someone's unmuted and I can't. That's all right, I just wanted to unmute, that's it. Um, so it, sample with intention. You've really got to be looking at um, what we sell lots of, okay? And then sampling it. I'm going to show you this really briefly. I'm not going to go for it all. This is when Laura was talking, I went to go and get this. This is my sample trolley. It's not particularly organized. 
Um, it's from uh, Ikea. You can get them in Hobbycraft as well. This is full. So I've got in here, for example, Go Go Mango. They're wax samples, all made up. I've got in here, um, hold on, what else have I got in here? Thank you packs, all made up. I've got, these are Luna um, Washer Whiffs and Laundry Liquid, all done, bought out of the success store, made them up, all ready to go. Um, I have got in here, I, here we go, Laura, dog products, all ready to go. Um, I have got dish soaps, I've got, you name it, I've got all sorts in there, right, okay. Loads and loads and loads of samples. Why have I got them done like that? Because it's literally a case of, like in every single order, they will get some form of sample. Now, what I tend to try and do, I look at my orders that are coming in, and I'm like, right, okay, I need 20 different samples. So if, for example, I've only got these package, packages, for example, I've only got eight of them, I will then go away and I will make up, make sure I've got 20. And that order, they all get the same sample. Why? Okay, this is the simple bit. It literally makes it easy to follow up with them because I remember that everybody on that particular order, whether it was January order one, for example, they all had Luna whiffs and they all had Luna liquid. So it means that I can follow up with them really simply and say, did you use your Luna, Luna whiffs and, and liquid? Do you know how to use them? This is how you use them straight away. It's opening up conversation again. Um, if I send them like more samples, like lots of little wax samples, maybe three or four, I will always go and ask them, what's your favorite sample that I sent you? I never ask them, do you want to order anything from the samples? I ask them, what do you want to order? Uh, not what do you want to order, what was your favorite? Could you do me a review on the samples? But you need to be sampling everything. It's not just a case of just sampling wax because wax is easy. Let's be honest, it's super easy to get six bars of wax in your credits, chop them all up, put them in little bags, send them out, easy peasy. But the more products you sample, the more likely you are going to get a return on them. I remember Laura saying that about Scentsy Fresh, for example, Clothesline Scentsy Fresh. She was like, every order that I put that in, I got an order. Never, ever one samples Clothesline Scentsy Fresh and they haven't ordered it every single time. Every single time. So you need to be looking at what you're sampling and it needs to be a range of stuff. Don't, as I say, don't just stick to wax. So look at going bigger, go big. You need to sample with intention though. If you see that on Facebook, your customer's got a dog, sample the dog products. Um, if you see they've got a cat, you can't. You could still sample the dog products because it's not just for dogs. Remember that. It's for, I don't know, my, my cats probably wouldn't want to be shampooed and washed. Probably not cats. But maybe like horses, for example, they still could be sampled. So think about all of, all of the products and make sure, you know, if you've, you see somebody and they're posting the fact that they've got a lot of laundry on their social media, make sure you sample them, the laundry products. It's really, really important. Like, oh my God, I can see all that laundry you've got. You so need to try out laundry. I'm going to get that out to you for your towels. You know, these are the sort of things that you should be looking for. So if you're not friends with your customers on social media, get them as friends on social media. Really, really important, but you need to sample with intention. But most importantly, you need to follow up. And that probably leads, leads me into the next bit. Um, I don't actually write down what everybody... Um, what I sample everybody because I'm not organized for that. I've tried it. I had a folder and I used to write everyone's name down and I thought I was being really organized and I showed my team and I'm not going to lie, within two weeks of doing it, the folder went out the window and it didn't work for me. So I find it's actually easier to sample the same products. Generally speaking, everyone will always get a scent of the month um, sample from me. And then I will add maybe laundry line to that, or I will add a couple of extra new, new waxes to that, or I might add um, bath soap, for example. So um, all of those different things. Now, I know that there's a few people that are asking in the questions, like how do you sample these things? Go and have a look on YouTube after. I've, I, I know that Laura's done loads of training on this. I certainly have, I know Laura has. So if not, maybe this is something that we can recover at some point, but there is loads of training out there on it, okay? Um, okay, following up. So that leads me on to the next bit. So once you sample, um, or once you give an order, the next play, the next thing you need to do is follow up. And I did this on a bit of training last night where we talked about don't feel uncomfortable with people about following up. Now, if you're if you're feeling uncomfortable with following up, it means you're doing it wrong. And I really do think that if you think oh, I'm going to send this message and they're going to go, they're either going to ghost me or they're going to be like, 
I'm not replying to that. That's a bit spammy. Then you're doing it wrong. If you feel uncomfortable, you need to change the way you're doing it. And this was something that I did intentionally. I now really make sure that my follow-ups are just like customer conversation. I call it more of a connection where I'm literally checking in with people. I'm not actually sitting there going, okay, I've got a set message that I'm going to send everybody. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Because no one likes that in their inbox. You wouldn't like, I, I know that I get it all the time. And I know Laura and Laura do as well. Daily, I get that inbox with somebody that goes, oh, hi, I really think that you would absolutely benefit from loving our products. And I think to myself, Jesus, like this person, or, oh, hey, you would really be great at network marketing. Have you ever tried it? Hello, have you looked at my social media? Like, hello, I've got Sensi literally glaring everywhere. Like, like why? Or, okay, fair enough, I might like to try a product, but how about get to know me first and find out whether I want to try your weight loss shake? Or how about get to know me first and find out whether you know, I've actually got a skincare routine already. So you need to also get to know your customers first before you start going in their inbox, trying to give them Sensi packs because it may well be that they've already got a consultant um, or it may well be they are a Sensi consultant and you're inboxing them saying, hey, would you like to try Sensi? And would you like a Sensi sample pack? You know, we've all, we've all done it. Yeah, we've that. Done it. I've nearly done that before, like, let's be honest. So you really need to look at what you're doing in terms of your follow-up. You need to not think of it as follow-up. Don't call it follow-up. Call it customer connections, okay? Making relationships, building relationships with your customers. Um, when I give out samples, quite often I will follow up and say, like, what was your favourite? If I um, deliver their order, my follow-up is really, really simple. I literally check in and just say, was everything okay? Did I miss anything? Because quite often I'm quite scatty and I would forget something. Um, or did your order arrive okay? Because if you've direct shipped it, did it arrive okay? Was everything all right? Um, was everything there that was supposed to be? And that will generally start the conversation. Some people will just say, oh yeah, thanks very much. It was great. And you might not get a lot. And quite often then I will just go back and go, great. You know where I am if you need anything. If not, would you mind popping a picture on my page? Because it's going to get that social interaction. And they go, yeah, of course, no worries. Or they send me a photo of it. And I'll say, do you mind if I um, pop this on my page? Straight away there, you can see that is maybe four or five messages that I've gone back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But I haven't once said, do you want to buy more wax? Do you want to buy a warmer? Do you want to buy this? Do you want to buy that? I haven't once said that. It's just conversation. I'm just literally having a chat with them and asking them what they thought of their products and did they like them and was there anything missing? So that's really, really important. Don't be, as I say, don't be spammy pammy. Build your relationships with your customers. Um, so different ways that I do that. I know Laura touched on WhatsApp broadcast is brilliant for me. I have it set up. Just a few tips. If you're going to set up a WhatsApp broadcast, one, they need to add you as a contact in their WhatsApp address book. Really, really important. So that's something that I message them and I say, could you add me as a contact in your WhatsApp? Not in your phone. It needs to be in their WhatsApp. Um, then I will also say, right, I'm going to send you a message just to check that you received it. And then I will do a test. Um, if they didn't receive it, then you obviously need to look into what's going on. More than likely, they've not saved you in the right place. Um, but I use broadcast all the time. So whenever we got, so today I sent out um, a picture of the obsidian and a picture of the, mm, what else is coming back tomorrow night that I would have sent a picture yeah, of? Nova. Nova. Yeah, and I said, oh my God, like these two warmers are coming back tomorrow night. Just letting you know, if you know anybody that, that wanted one of these, let me know and I can add it on my order tomorrow night. I've had two orders for an obsidian off the back of my WhatsApp list and they wasn't necessarily for customers on my list, some of them were referrals. So you don't necessarily have to be in their inbox for them um, or even more. And sometimes if I'm sending them like a few things, I go, sorry, it's me again, you know, just in your inbox again, make it fun. Exactly like Laura said, use that language. Sometimes I'm like, oh, sorry, I've spammed you and sent you loads of messages today, but I know you're not gonna wanna miss out on this. And they're like, oh, don't worry about it. They chose to be on that WhatsApp list. They chose to be on that VIP list. And they can always ask to leave. I always remind them of that. Um, probably something that a lot of people forget is email. You can email directly from your workstation to all your customers that have ever, ever registered on your um, workstation. So you can email them a list of maybe what's coming back. You could email them once a week if you've got a special offer. You can email them if you've got a special offer to join. Because what um, workstation actually, um, BCCs, as Laura said, for about like WhatsApp, 
all your emails. So it doesn't make the mistake like me where I just send everybody's email to everybody. Um, done that before, GPDR, GDPR, whatever it's called. Um, just think about that, remember that. Um, but if you're doing it from your actual workstation, it BCCs everybody in, you can send that to your whole contact list saying, I've got an offer to join for 25 quid. Or um, is there anybody that would like to order um, this bundle and save offer or this Walmart is coming back in, for example. And you can send that to everybody that's ever registered on your website in one hit. Think about that, how quick it is to actually reach every single customer. Now, I know people aren't traveling at the moment, but my customers used to say to me, I'd read, I'd read your emails on the train on the way back to and from work. Um, but email is just another great tool. Like if people are signing up and registering on your e on your website, it means that they've given you con they've given you that um, what's it permission if you like to be able to send them an email and soon they will unsubscribe if they don't want to be on that list. Um, okay, sorry, I'm talking really fast. You've also got messenger groups and VIP groups that you can have them set up, but make sure you've got some sort of follow up system. I also tag all my customers. Um, in thank you posts and refer uh, like in referral posts on my actual Facebook, which really generates that FOMO that Laura was talking about earlier. Everyone loves a bit of FOMO. Um, okay, two more tips from me and then we're nearly done. Oh, actually three, sorry. Um, okay, something that probably has grown my business in lockdown the most, okay, is referral programs. Laura touched on it earlier. I am, I have, these are old ones, but I have sample packs that are made up 10, at least 10 a month. And my aim is to get all 10 of those out to every single, to new people every single month. Um, so I have two things that I do. I ask, and this was a tip from Kyla Hunter last night. I do this on a bigger, broader scale, but I ask customers to refer one person. I just want one address. That's all I'm looking for to send them a sample pack, to send them um, samples. And I, and I literally do it like this. I message my customers and I say, hun, you buy so much from me. If you've got any friends or family that would absolutely love one of these sample packs, I've got 10. I literally want to get rid of them this month. What um, Have you got any friends that want one? Keep it really simple. I voice note quite often because they can hear that it's very casual and it's not like, you know, in their, in their face. Really, and then what I do is I send them out these sample packs. Now you can see they're reasonably flat. They cost me £1.28, I think, to send roughly. In there, it's got a few wax samples. And um, if anybody is like looking for what's in this, I've got a YouTube that's on it. Go and have a little look. And it literally has a step by step of what goes in these packs. But I send them out. And then what I do, this is the important bit. I never ever send these out unless I get somebody's telephone number or their address or their messenger or something okay this is literally like gold because you need to be able to message that person and say did you get your sample pack okay now if you just send these out to random people you're throwing money down the drain it literally is simple as that so i sent out five last week and i've messaged every single one of them and i've had orders of every single one of those packs i treat these like my borrow bag and i'm going to come on to that in a minute so these are so important, okay? These are so important. Now, what happens is, go on, Laura. Can I add one little thing to that? Um, sorry, I had Harry called me, so you might have said it, but I'll obviously, um, looking for the opportunity on that, just to give you an example, I bought a shirt from um, a girl I used to go to school with, opened a boutique up in Yorkshire, um, that I ordered a shirt from her, like to support her business. And then obviously when she sent it out to me and I was like, oh, um, can I have your shop address or your home address so I can send you a sample pack? I kind of knew, I don't know her well. Um, like, so I can send you a sample pack for my business. I run a home fragrance business. And obviously she was like, oh my God, yeah, I'd love that. So I've sent her a sample pack. So just bear in mind, if you're buying from a small business, like they're going to be totally open to, to trying your small business because that's what people do. So don't, don't be worried if you're like buying something, then always offer, use that as an opportunity to offer your business as well. 100%. So what I do is every person that gives me, so say for example, Laura gave me three addresses and I send them out and I got orders. I then send them the thank you referral pack. This doesn't go to the new customer. This goes to my existing customer. And I have these already made up. They're literally, these, these have very merry cranberry scent packs in because I never got rid of them at Christmas. So I was like, yeah, they can go, freebie. Happy to get rid of those. And then they've got a whole load of samples in there. And then I also have just made, and I'm waiting for them to be delivered. What do I do with that? I had it just now, hold on. Oh, I have too many bits of paper. A little thank you card that I've made up. And in the back, I would just write, 
Two, Sarah, thanks so much for, um, you know, take uh, for recommending a friend for a sample pack. Here's some freebies on me. And literally, that's what they're getting. What do I do? I get these are my host credits. So all my set, some, uh, scent packs or wax or um, scent circles or anything like that, I literally get with my host credits. And they will get that sent to them in the pack as a little thank you to say thanks so much or in the next order to say thank you for referring somebody. Because what does that do? Okay, I actually I had a friend, she referred 10 or 15 people to me. I tried to get her to join, she wasn't interested. So I gave her a mini fan and pods. She then referred another 10 people to me. She added them to my group, she's tagging them. I got another three really good customers off of that. And they're now referring people to me. And, but they do that because you're rewarding good behavior. It's a bit like Pavlov's dog theory. If you reward the good behavior, they will do it more. So for example, my customer was like, oh my God, hold on a minute. I got a mini fan that I got free. Didn't cost me a penny. I got that free. I rewarded her with that because she referred so many people to me and she didn't want to join. And then off the back of that, she now keeps referring people to me. She's referred someone to me this month that I'm just about to send a um, box out to who also I'm in having a join conversation with. So if that girl joins, I've got some mini warmers in stock and I'm going to gift her, that, that her friend, the one that referred her, a mini warmer to say thank you. Because at the end of the day, a joiner is worth so much more to me than a customer. So you need, this is part of your customer service. Like get a system in place for this. I now have this where they're all made up. You can see they're ready to go. I can literally go, literally, oh, I've got a referral. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Boom. Out we go. And they're all done. And it's like, that's, that's life to me because it's easy. Um, but remember, you can use your host credit to get the goodies. Um, Kelly, I did just go through my, uh, what goes in my referral packs? That is them, hun. So normally a product, some description and some samples and a thank you card. Okay, so have a referral system. You can come up with anything you like as a referral system. Okay, you can give them whatever you can afford to give them. Don't feel you've got to give them product. Okay, don't feel you've got to give them product. Um, Generally, Dawn, I, if they refer a few people to me, I will still send them a thank you pack anyway, whether they order or not, because um, I want them to carry on doing it. I want them to keep doing it because eventually some, somewhere along the line, I will get a customer from it. And then everyone they refer, I offer them a sample pack, unless they've already got a customer, a consultant. I always ask, do you have a consultant before I send you a sample pack? And if they say yes, then I say, no worries, I won't send you a sample pack because I'm not going to tread on anyone's toes. And that's really, really important. Really, really important. Um, okay, I'm always looking for new customers, like on, on the lookout for new customers. Everywhere I go, I'm looking for new customers, whether it's when I go to the supermarket, whether it's when I go to um, drop the kids off at school, in the school playground, when I go to the gym. Um, I have these literally in my car, I have them in my handbag, I have them wherever I'm going so that when I get in a conversation with somebody, I'm never sensey naked and I can literally um, give them beautiful sensey and encourage them to buy. So wherever I'm going, I'm looking for, to, for those new customers, even if it's in the doctor's surgery, you know, the receptionists that are in there. Um, I've done the two ladies at Christmas that work in the post office, both got, got like really lovely bumper sample packs for me because I probably have been in there 10 days on the trot like delivering stuff um and delivering like all my packages and they were both amazing so I gave them um sample packs and they were like oh my god this smells amazing and again every time I go in there now it's like we've got this like they're like oh yeah look I'll do that for you and I'll do that for you it goes a really long way but I'm always looking for those customers always um Think about your list of 100, okay? We all, believe it or not, we all have a list of 100. Every single one of us has a list that we visit. When we're quiet on orders, I pull out my list of customers and I go down my list and I start looking, right? Who hasn't bought for a while? Who hasn't bought? Who do I need to, you know, draw back into my business? Who do I need to go and interact with on social media? Who do I need to message just to see if they're still using their sensei you know all of those different things so have your list of 100 if you've never done one go away tonight and go and make a list now you might only have 36 you might only have 10 but then look to build on that list every single month try and try and increase it by 10 percent. so if you've got 100 on yours try and increase it by 10 new customers every month and um, if you've got 
uh, 50 customers, try and increase it by five. And that, that is a challenge. It's not easy to find new customers. But I tell you, when you do, you literally have that light bulb moment. Even Laura sometimes will ring me and go, I've just found someone that's never had Sensi. And we're like, yes, we're literally celebrating because we've found a Sensi Virgin. It's like the best feeling in the world. Um, okay, so, um, okay, my last little tip for you is about borrow bags. There Now, if you've got a little bag like these, and I'm going to ask this question, and I'd love you to answer it in the comments, is tell me where your borrow bag is right now. Is it at customers? Is it sitting in your house? Be completely honest. I've got one here. Um, is it um, in your lounge? Is it in your car? Is it somewhere it shouldn't be? Have you not got a borrow bag? That's the question. So pop it in there. I've got lots of customers, which is good. Out, out in my lounge. I can see a lounge. I can see a car. I've got, to, I've got, I actually have four of these and two of them are out, two of them are in my car. The one's here, one's in my car. So um, your sense, basically, you, the smelling does the selling, right? We know if you got, got given this right now, you know that probably if you wasn't a consultant, one, you'd even want to sign up as a consultant or two, you'd want to buy at least a six pack of wax. Let's be honest, right? So if you haven't, even if you haven't got a borrow bag and you've never done a borrow bag before, keep it simple. Give them a bag of smells. Give them a catalogue. Go and deliver it round to their house. Even give them a few samples for free as well, if you like. And leave it with them for a couple of days. And then, here's the big one. Follow up. Message them. That follow-up question, that follow-up word has been in nearly every single, in my referrals, in my samples, in my referral schemes, in my um, always looking for new customers, in my list of 100, you're now hearing that word follow-up. It is so important in your business. So give your customers this and then follow up with them. Have you had a smell yet? Did you enjoy them? If they come back and say no, that's fine. You just say, okay, no worries, hon. It's going out with a customer in two more days. Um, let me know when you're going to get a chance to have a whiff. Okay, pin them down to actually doing it. So I did that. What a lady's got, she's got literally a bag of wax, all the wax, and she's got a brand new catalogue. I haven't actually gone crazy and given her all the warmers and all the things that I usually do. I kept it really simple. And I've come away with a 95 pound order from that borrow bag that will be going in tomorrow night. And that literally was keeping it simple. So I now need to go and pick that up and I need to book it in with somebody else. Now these... New season sense. If some of you are like, I've really struggled to get my borrow bag out, go to your most regular customers and tell them, I'm dropping off the new season sense to you. Don't ask them, do you want my borrow bag? No. If someone said that to me, I'd be like, nah, not going to be in it. I'm going to ghost that message. Um, just tell them, I'm just going to drop off my new season sense. I think you need to have a smell of them. You're going to love them. Keep it simple. Okay, don't complicate the matters. This is why this is called simple steps to success. It is simple. There's no, um, you know, there's no magic formula. And if you do this over and over again, if you think you could leave this with a customer for three days, you've got 30 days in the month, that could go to 10 customers. All right, not, not, it's a short month this month, but that could go to 10 customers. That's minimum without maybe sending out sample packs to people in the post. Like you could be looking at getting your sense out. That could be 10 potential six pack orders. If they all ordered a six pack, you think about that, 36 pound 25, that's over an active order. Okay, so all of you that struggle to get active, this is what you need to do. Drop it off, pick it up, drop it off, pick it up, drop it off, pick it up, eat, sleep, rave, repeat. I love that saying. <laughs> So, but, that, but most important, you need to follow up with people. If somebody does say, um, look, I'm not interested. It's a little bit too expensive. Not a problem. Could I ask you just to pop a little review on my page? That's free, okay? It literally, just put your favorite six waxes because someone might see, say Laura was my customer and she said, I can't really afford it this month, but I, I will do you six waxes. She posts that on her personal page. She posts that on your customer group. Someone might go, oh, I know Laura. I actually really like things that Laura likes. Oh, I love that six pack lease, you know, or one of her friends on her personal page might go, oh, Laura, what's this thing called Sensi? What, what, what is it? And she oh, goes, who would do oh, that? At least I would. I did that and then I joined. Um, so literally, yeah, someone said, I force samples. Force is probably the right word. Yeah, literally force your samples on your brand new customers. When you are going out delivering, put them in your car and just say to every customer, oh, do you want to smell these? I'll leave them with you. 
for a few days. If you've got people, obviously, um, and it doesn't matter whether they buy one wax bar or whether they buy 20 wax bars off you, you want every single one of your customers to smell them. Now, if your customers are not local to you, I did just see that come up, then that's where you've got to get little packs made up. I don't think I've got one. So like, for example, take this out, little pack made up, put and put 10 or 15 sliver samples. If you've not seen, um, I'm going to ask Kirsty to put her sliver samples, she might be watching, on YouTube if it's not on there. And if she has got it on YouTube, I'll get her to share the link. But she did a training on how you can get 10 slivers of thin wax out of one cube of wax, which means you could get 80 samples out of one bar, which means potentially, if they're flat enough, you could send them in the post and you could do that with a stamp. Oh, the um, felt... Felt samples, yeah. Um, so if you do that and you've got people that don't live close to you, then make up samples that are specifically to go in the post and literally get them sent out. It will be worth the pound twenty-eight that it might cost you in postage. Let's say you do 10, it might cost you a tenner in postage, but you could get a return of, you know, a six pack from every single one of those if you send enough samples, okay? So um, I think that's... Oh, my last tip for you, okay? My last tip, I will stop talking in a minute, is be your own best customer. Because like all of us do, we use our credits to buy our wax, to buy our hand cream, to buy our um, body cream, to buy my bath soap, to buy my you know, shower gel, all of those things that the kids aren't allowed to touch, obviously. <laughs> um, but I am my own best customer. I don't use... Elemis bath soak. I don't use a different range from somewhere else. Um, ha you know, hand cream. I use our hand cream because actually, I would rather if I'm going to go and buy a hand cream in the shop, I would much rather pay for ours half price, or I would much rather get the PRV for it myself and use it. So, be your own best customer. And every time, and this is a big thing we talked about yesterday, didn't we, Laura? Every yeah. time you pick up a piece of Scentsy to use or to um, you know, to move from one side of the room to the other or to change or to um, clean something with. This is where I can do well. Wow. Yeah, take a picture of you doing it and post it on your social media. And, it and that is matter. when, that's when attraction market becomes easy because I don't think about it. attraction marketing. I'm cleaning my bathroom and I'm like, oh, picture. I'm yeah. having a bath, yeah. picture. Yeah. I'm, I'm washing up picture attraction marketing is easy if you are your own best customer because you constantly have the stuff with everyday life that you're doing all the time you don't okay. need to think oh what should, what should i post yeah so Brain changing your wax washing your hands doing your washing it's all yeah. stuff that we all do yeah so this week, guys, I know there's probably some questions, but because we've been chatting for quite a while, oh my God, it's like 10 o'clock. Before we did the task, can I just, I've written two, down two things that uh, link in from what you, what you were both talking about, that link in together. And this is what I just wanted to say. When we say keep it simple, there's some things that the, both the girls have said. Right, so while Lisa was obviously talking about like um, using your host credits to get, you know, to get all the stuff, right? Just think, if you aim for 2,000 PRV, like Laura said, just imagine how many host credits you're going to have at the end of the month. You are going to have hundreds and hundreds of pounds to spend on free Sensi. So that, when we talk about everything is simple and everything just like interlinks, it's so true. Because also, if your orders accumulate over £605 in the month, your shipping's free. So you've got free shipping, you've got nothing to worry about there. Um, and you've got hundreds of pounds to claw back any shipping you've already spent and get loads of free stuff to do using your attraction marketing. Keep it simple. And then last thing was don't overthink anything like they said just don't anything anything we've talked about overthinking is probably the biggest like uh, I don't want to say killer that sounds really dramatic but like of people doing things in their business because they go to do it and then something in their mind goes oh yeah you can don't listen to that not we're not talking about mindset now but don't overthink stuff just keep it simple like you know some of the questions in there well how do you just message them just tell them you need their work just tell them keep it simple and don't overthink right I'll stop now yeah. So your task this week, guys, we're gonna we've set we've done two. So one, um, I, I will put up a thread again where you can put like your biggest takeaway moment from from the whole like of tonight. And there has been a lot. There is a lot of tips. Okay. Um, I don't want you to think, oh my god, I now need to go away and do every single one of these because it's not possible. And we have gradually built these things into our business within time. 
But we do want you to pick one thing that you think, right, actually, I don't do that. And that could be a game changer for my business and start to implement it into your business. Start to think of a way between now and next week. So if it's a referral scheme, um, start doing it and start advertising that you're doing a referral scheme or start letting your customers know if it's setting up your VIP WhatsApp group, go and do that. But we want you to pick one thing that we've done. And then the, the big challenge, okay? So this is like, we've got two challenges, one challenge, and then we've got the big challenge. The big challenge is to go for, see if you can get 200 PRV in orders between now and when we talk next week. So you've got a week. Now, some of you are already going, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do that. Some of you just went, oh my God, that's easy. Um, and if you do it, what we'd really like you to do is share how you did it in the group. Share what you did, because that is going to be what's going to help someone else. But don't be disheartened if you can't do it. You've got seven days, 200 PRV, seven days is... 28 PRV. <laughs> 28 PRV a day. That's 28. One six pack. One six pack every single day. And if you hustle every single day to get that one six pack, this is going to be, it could be a game changer. If every 160 people that have watched this tonight do this, it could be a game changer because suddenly the light bulb's going to go on that says, I can do this. Think about what Lisa was saying as well. If you're getting your borrow bag out, there's no reason why you shouldn't be getting those six packs. If you're getting sample packs out, if you're getting your borrow bags out, if your borrow bags at home, then message people, not maybe now, it's 10 o'clock, but message people in the morning, like Lisa said, can you try out the new season sense for me? I just threw a re blah, review. Nine times out of 10, I know my customers. I'm actually thinking actually you're already a customer. I'm going to do it too tomorrow. Because I know full well, she's got loads of wax. She doesn't need any more wax, but she'll smell them. We go, oh my God, can you give me a six pack? Just get the borrow bag to them that automatically is your quickest way to get in that 200 PRV. It's one six pack a day. 100% if you tell yourself you're able to do it, 100% you will be able to do it. And Lucy's just said, yeah, it's law of, law of attraction, isn't it? Yeah. It it right, guys, I feel like we need to wrap this up because it has been a really long training and I, I think we should say a huge thank you to everybody that stuck with us for the whole way through. Um, hopefully you're all buzzing. We go away from these and then can't sleep. I was, <laughs> I was half asleep before we come on and now I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, my head's like exploding. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, hopefully we will see you all back here next week and we won't have any issues with the Zoom link this time. Yeah, um, guys, like tag us in, tag each other in, like let like that attraction marketing, let the world know how much you're loving your sensory business and people oh, are involved in yeah. that. And another really good opportunity, guys, go and get your accountability buddy. This is the time when you need that accountability buddy to be like, right, let's go and get our 200 PRV. How are we going to do it? So go and do it. Right, guys, take care. Um, have a really lovely evening and speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks.